Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please do come and take a seat. Welcome to Holy Trinity Gateshead. It is lovely to welcome you on this warm and um, earlier than normal service. It is my pleasure to welcome you. Um, so well done for making it for half nine rather than a normal half ten. Uh, or during this great North Run Sunday. For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Matt. I'm a church worker here. Uh, I'll be leading our time together this morning. Chris, our senior minister, is going to come and preach to us um, from our last of our series in the Psalms for the summer. Our Psalm 33 we'll be looking at this morning. Before we start our time together, though, let me just read some words from Psalm 96. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, for he is to be feared above all gods. Let's do this together now as we're going to stand and sing our first song, singing worship to our God and our victorious King. Just as we continue our time together, I've got a few uh, notices for us this morning. Um, you may have noticed that the bypass is closed. Uh, there is the Great North Run happening this morning. And um, so after the service, we've got an opportunity. We're going to go um, out uh, to uh, meet with the people who are watching and encourage them. So little plans. So after the service, there's still going to be tea and coffee, still an opportunity to stay around and chat to one another. Uh, but tea and coffee will only be served from the hatch at the back of this room. So rather than uh, previously at the other room, it will only be from in this room. Um, and then there's also a chance there's a team who are going out uh, with some teas, coffee, some flyers, some booklets, uh, and just an opportunity to go and talk to those who are watching, um, uh, just talk to them about who we are, uh, about hopefully about Jesus, and just spread the love of Jesus by um, giving those things out for free and uh, encouraging those who are there. So let's do be praying for them. And let's, um, if you have, like to go out and join them, please do. Uh, it's an absolute opportunity to go and just, while you're watching the Red North Run, go and have to chat, talk to people, and offer them a free tea and coffee as well. So that's straight after the service this morning. 
Um, this week, we have got all of our midweek uh, gr groups are uh, starting back. So TOTS is on tomorrow morning. Uh, the Hub is returning on Tuesday. Uh, our home groups are back on on Wednesday, and our women's fellowship is on Wednesday and Friday. So do check um, in the foyer. There are flyers and there are term cards. All of those, all the dates on. So do go in the foyer and check those out. On Saturday, the 30th of September, we are having a Macmillan coffee morning here in the building. A great opportunity to, to um, love the community, uh, invite them in, and to be sharing our time together. So that's Saturday, uh, the 30th of September, uh, in the morning, uh, here in the building. Uh, and next Sunday, we are going to be starting a new sermon series. Uh, we're going to be looking at the book of John over the coming term. And also next Sunday, our children's uh, groups will be starting back. And it's great to have so many who are uh, starting to help with leading our groups uh, this term. So it's a big thank you to all those who have volunteered to help with the leading and the teaching this term. Um, it may also be great, though, we do have a, a, a bit of a need in a crash. So if you'd like to be able to just help in some way and you're not sure how, we do have um, a couple of spaces we need for helping to lead with the crash to help with our capacity and with numbers there. So do come and talk to us afterwards if you'll be able to help in that capacity. I'm just going to pass over to Chris now as well. He's got a little notice about the electoral roll. Thanks very much, Matt. So, yes, um, as part of our governance structures here, uh, we have an annual general meeting, and that's for all regular church family members here. That's coming up on the 4th of October. Um, if you'd like to be able to participate in that by voting or even standing uh, to serve on our church council uh, or as a church warden, you will need to um, be part of the electoral roll. Uh, it's basically a list of people who are committed to uh, the life of the church and to helping make and mature disciples of Jesus here. Um, so if you're a regular member of the church who knows Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, you're more, uh, over the age of 16 and you've been baptised, uh, we'd love you to sign up and be part of the electoral roll. Um, you can read more information about that uh, on uh, one of these forms which are out in the foyer. Uh, all the information came out electronically this week, uh, week to everyone uh, on our mailing list as well. If you've got any questions about that or you want to know more, please do come and grab me after the service. Um, but if you want to be uh, participate in the AGM in any way, shape or form in terms of voting or standing for election, you will need to be on that. And it's a great way, actually, to get involved in shaping uh, the life of the church. So if you consider uh, Holy Trinity Gateshead to be your church family uh, and you're a follower of Jesus, please do sign up and uh, get involved. I'm going to hand back over to Matt. Let me just read some words um, from the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 8. He says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. That's all about us, isn't it? In our hearts and our minds, what we do and what we want, what we think and what we say. It's always tempting to move away from the loving God and loving one another, away from living God's ways for our lives, we saying no to God. But Jesus has come. Jesus has lived the perfect life, and because of his death, we are now forgiven of when we stray from God's way. That's once and always. And so let us join together now. We're going to say sorry to God for how we still stray, how we move away from his way, and how we seek to live our life our way instead of his good and right way for us. So let's say it together now. It's going to be a prayer of confession on the screen behind me. So let's pray. God of all mercy, we come to you as your unworthy children. We have strayed from your ways like lost sheep, following our own desires and the ways of this world. We thank you for the death of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, for our sins, and for his mighty resurrection from the dead. Through his sacrifice for our sins, forgive us and cleanse us, and by your Spirit, 
enable us to honour and glorify you as we walk afresh in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let me read verse 9 from that passage again, where John says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We have and will always be forgiven as we come to Jesus and trust God's plan for us through Jesus the Son. And we're going to sing of this now in our next song, after which we're going to hear um, from Psalm 33 as Chimdia comes to read to us and Chris comes to preach. Let's stand and sing. reading is taken from Psalm 33. Psalm 33. It's on page 560 of the Blue Bible. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-string lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He pulls the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the people. 
but the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place, he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all his great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. This is the word of the Lord. Wonderful. Thank you, Jim Deere, for reading for us. Um, do keep your Bibles open there at Psalm 33. It's on page 395 of these Blue Church Bibles. If you close those up, uh, do get it back open. Now, over the summer, uh, we've been looking at various psalms, haven't we? And we've thought of them as like the soundtrack uh, of God uh, for our lives. They're songs that God's people sang together to remember what he's like and to help us trust him even when life uh, is tough. And as we come to this psalm this morning, it is the noisiest yet that we've seen. It's the noisiest of the psalms we've come to. So in a few moments, I'm going to be encouraging us to make some noise. But before I do that, uh, let me pray and ask for God's help as we look at, together, look at it together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that your word is true and right. Please would you help us to hear it this morning and to be changed by it. Uh, Lord, excite us about who you are and what you've done, we pray. Amen. We see, the reason this psalm is, uh, as I would say, a noisy psalm, is because it encourages us to sing, shout, and play instruments, and basically have a great big praise party. Uh, Have a look at verse uh, 1 with me. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It's fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. I don't think we've got one of those this morning, um, but we'll do our best. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. See, lots of instructions that are telling us to be noisy. Now, maybe when you come to church, sometimes or even lots of the time, you feel like your mum and dad are telling you to be quiet. They're telling you, shh, listen. Now, that's not wrong. It is good to listen. But there are times when actually we should make lots of noise to celebrate and sing and shout just how good God is. Now, do you think we can have a go at that this morning? I'm not convinced. (laughs) Do you think we can have a go at that this morning? Brilliant. So whenever I say make lots of noise, can you cheer and whoop and make a happy noise? Let's give it a go. Make lots of noise. It's not bad. It's not bad. Let's have one more. Let's have, have more, one more go. Make lots of noise. Fantastic. Now, this is, this is good practice for the Great North Run as we uh, gear up for cheering on the runners this morning as well. Um, the psalmist even says that we should get some instruments out, doesn't he? He says, uh, praise the Lord with the harp and the ten-string lyre, play skillfully. Um, anyone got a favourite instrument? Yes. The drums, mm, they make lots of good noise, don't they? Yes. Perhaps you'd like to come out and help me, actually. Does anyone else like the, like the drums? Oh, yes, your hand over there. You want to come out? Fantastic. Um, we've got an instrument over here. Um, does anyone know what this is called? It looks like a box, doesn't it? Does anyone know? Oh, one of our drum fans knows, knows what it is. Does anyone else want to know what this is? It's called a... Oh, yes, there's a hand over there. Jago. 
No, not sure. Do you want to tell us? It's a cajon. It's a cajon. And um, <laughs> makes some good noise, doesn't it? So could you guys, when we say make lots of noise, uh, um, help us by uh, making... Yeah, yeah. Why don't you both do it together? See if we get lots... Right, are we ready? Make lots of noise! <laughs> That's sounding even better. Um, anyone else got any favourite instruments? Yes? A violin. I don't have a violin, but perhaps when we're doing it, you can pretend to be playing a violin, maybe make some beautiful uh, noises. Sam, you've got a favourite instrument? A ukulele. You can pretend to play a ukulele when we're doing uh, lots of noise, yeah? yeah? A piano. Yeah, we can pretend to play the piano. Um, a, a yes? A flute. So there's all sorts of instruments, aren't there, that we can play and make... Lots of noise. <laughs> to play. Wonderful. Boys, do you want to take that down there? And whenever, we, whenever you hear those words, you can do that from down there and help us as we, uh, as we do that this morning. But hang on a minute. There's lots of noise going on, but why should we sing and shout and make lots of noise? <laughs> What's the big fuss about? What, what, what is it that should make us do this? What could possibly be so good that we need to shout about it? Well, let's have a little look at the psalm. It's because God is so, so good. Have a look at verse 4. For the word of the Lord... So it starts with the word 4, so it's giving us the reason for why we need to make all of this loud sound. For the Lord, the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice, and the earth is full of his unfailing love. The reason we're to sing and shout is because God is just so, so good. The psalm writer tells us to praise him and be really noisy about it because of his goodness. It says he speaks the truth to us. His word is right and true, verse 4. So, even when it's not what we want to hear, God tells us what is right and what is true. Uh, verse 4 also says he's faithful. He is faithful in all he does, which means he always keeps his promises. Everything he does is perfect and good. That's what verse 5 says, isn't it? The Lord loves righteousness and justice. So everything he does is perfect and good and even more than that, he loves us and he makes his love known everywhere. The earth is full of his unfailing love. That's pretty epic, isn't it? The God that we get to know that has made himself known to us and even verse 11 builds on that and says something just as amazing. The plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purpose of his heart through all generations it means whatever God plans happens. His plans never fail. Well, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? There's no one like him. Do your plans always happen? No. Are you always truthful and good? No. There's no one else like God, is there? But that's what's sad, you see, is that sometimes we forget that God is so good. I wonder if sometimes that's when, why when we come to church, our heart isn't always in the singing. Because, you know, how does verse 1 tell us to sing? How does it tell us to sing? Yeah. Joyfully! Now, do you think we always sing joyfully? I don't think we do, do we? It tells us to sing joyfully because as we remember God... And what he's like, as we get together as his people, it should bring joy to our heart. We should be like, wow, this is amazing. What an incredible God that we're joining to celebrate. It should bring a smile to our face, shouldn't it? How, does, how do you feel when your favourite football team scores a goal? Oh, yes. You make lots of noise, don't you? Do <laughs> he tricked me, he tricked me. Yeah. Does anyone want to show us how they react when their favourite football team scores a goal? 
We've got a volunteer over here. You're going to show us how you react when, you, when your favourite football team scores a goal. What do you do? What? Do you celebrate? Yeah. Do you go, woo! Yeah. Are you, you going to show us? Yeah. Should we get your dad to show us instead? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. You make lots of noise, don't you? You cheer and you whoop. And you're like, this is the best thing ever. They, we're going to win. It's incredible. You sh but when we come to church, we've got something so much better to sing and shout and whoop about, haven't we? You know, our football team might have scored a goal, but then the other team might score and they might lose the match. But God is always good. He never fails. And you know what? If we let the joy of knowing God in our hearts connect to our worship, well, then we'll sing boldly with faces that let our joy show. That first song we sang this morning, can you imagine if we, well, if, you, if we could turn a mirror sometimes and just see what we look like? Sing to God new songs of worship. You know, that's quite dull, isn't it? But no, sing to God new songs of worship. If we've got joy in our hearts because of God, let's see if we can let that joy connects with what we do. Now, God doesn't want fake or forced emotion. But if we think about what we're singing, the next line, all his deeds are marvellous. That should bring a smile to our face, shouldn't it? It will show three. It also doesn't say you've got to sing tunefully. You know, God isn't looking for expert singers. He does, he does say we need skilled musicians. That is there. But it doesn't actually say we've got to sing tunefully. Uh, I've got a great friend back in Sheffield. You know, he couldn't sing in tune for Toffee, but he belted it out, and that was a great encouragement to me. So don't worry if you're not a great singer or you don't feel very confident singing. Just belt it out, because we've got a great God to praise. We sing on Sundays because God is so good. And we're even encouraged to make and sing new songs. Do you see that, verse 3? Sing to him a new song. And it's like, actually... God is so good that we just need more and more songs to express how good he is, to help us respond to his love in fresh ways. And that's actually what we're going to do now. We're going to learn a new song all about what God has done for us. And it's based around the Apostles' Creed. Alan's going to uh, tell us a little bit more about how we're going to go about learning this. Boys, thank you so much for your help. If you want to go and sit back in your seats, you can leave that there for now. Yeah, that's fine. thanks, everyone. Um, we're going to sing a new song. It is good and great to sing new songs to our God and sing songs about what we believe about God as well. Um, so please stand. Uh, as a band, we're going to sing through verse 1 and the chorus, and then um, if you can join in with verse, uh, we'll go back to the first verse and sing it again. Uh, so please stand. We're going to play through and then join in.
fantastic. Do you have a seat? And thank you to the band for leading us in that new song. It's uh, a wonderful encouragement, isn't it? To sing praise to our wonderful God, who is three in one. Now, in the first half, we were thinking that we should make lots of noise. Because God is so, so good. But you know what? Sometimes life gets hard, doesn't it? And it's hard to keep seeing how good God is. When bad or sad things happen, we can find ourselves worrying and wanting something to make us feel safe. Now, that's what happens in the next part of the psalm. In the next part of the psalm, there was a king who had a big problem. You know what his problem was? His enemies wanted to fight a war with him. So the question is, what's he going to trust? What do you think a king might trust when his enemies are coming and they want a battle? Yes, Emily. God. Now, that would be a great answer to the question, trusting God. That's what he should do, isn't it? But you know what? Kings aren't always that sensible. What else can they trust? Yes. He looks to his army and he goes, I've got soldiers. I've got a massive army. I'm sure I'll be safe. My army's the biggest army. So... He counts all his men to see if he could feel safe. And he looks at his strong and mighty horse and he thinks, you know what? I think I'll be okay. But these won't save him. Have a look at verse 16. No king is saved by the size of his army. And then verse 17. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot safe. You see, these things the king thought he could look to to keep him safe were useless. Now, there was a strong man as well who also had a big problem. Someone wanted to beat this man up. Now, what do you think he might trust as he goes into this fight? Hmm. What might he trust? He's going to trust his own strength, isn't he? I'm sure I'll be safe if I'm the strongest. That's what he thinks. So he went to the gym, he ate more protein, buffed up those muscles. But you know what? That won't keep him safe. Have a look at verse 16 again, the second part of it. No warrior escapes by his great strength. Hmm. Oh dear. What about us? What do we trust when we have a big problem? What kind of things do we trust when we have a big problem? Yeah. The doctor. Yeah, we might trust a doctor to help us if we're feeling ill. That's not a bad thing to do, is it? Yeah. Well, maybe it's our friends. Maybe you think, I'm sure I'll be okay as I start high school if I'm with the The cool kids. If I can get in with the right friends, I'll be okay. So we follow the crowd to feel safe. But you know what? Being popular won't save us. Some of us will rely on ourselves. Oh, if I work hard and pass all my exams or come first in the race, then I'll be okay. It's quite appropriate on Great North Run Day, isn't it? You know? So we try really hard at school, or we work really hard, or we, we put, throw ourselves into sports and being the best. But you know what? That can't save us either. Now, friends and hard work and strong bodies, and even the things that the king was looking to, the, the, his army and his strength, they're good things. But they can't look after us when life in this world is actually hard. They can't save us. They can't beat death, and they definitely can't get us into heaven. Only God can. Only God can save us. Only God can welcome us into his family, forgive us for all the wrong things we do, and take us safely to be with him forever. He loves us perfectly all the time. He's the one to trust. I see, so the second reason to make lots of noise is because God is so good to us. He's not just kind of good in a general way. He's good to us. 
He loves us. He's kind to us. Have a look at verse 18 and 19. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. Isn't that amazing? For those who look to the Lord to keep them safe, who put their hope and their trust in him, well, his eyes are on us. He's watching over us. He's even able to deliver us from death. Now, imagine the difference that it would make to the king or the strong man that we were thinking about a moment ago, or actually to each and every one of us here, if we remembered that. If we remembered that God loves us and is looking after us all the time. Even when life is hard, God's plans for us have not failed. He will do what he's promised. He will keep us going until the day when we are with him face to face. As you read earlier, his plans can't fail. So we need to shout and sing to one another, to encourage one another, to keep trusting God. Because you know what? We're quite forgetful. And so easily we get distracted and think that there's some other way to be safe. There'll be times when we think, I don't know how God is helping me. I'd better look after myself instead. But when that happens, we have to remind one another to trust God and not ourselves. Because he is our great and good God, and only he can keep us safe. Now, perhaps you're facing a particularly tough season in life at the moment. And I know that there are several of us here, many of us here, who perhaps are feeling that that is the case. Let's listen in to these incredible words from the end of the psalm together. Uh, Verse 20 to 22. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. And then this wonderful little prayer. Perhaps a prayer for you today, if you're wondering and doubting or just struggling to hold on to God's goodness. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Just like the psalm writer, we can trust that God is absolutely 100% faithful. He will help us with whatever we're struggling with at the moment. And he's able to keep us safe through whatever storms or battles life brings. He is our shield. He's able to help us even through the biggest of battles. As one of my favorite, uh, more recent songs we've introduced, which is one of our children's songs, says, we can trust him. When the going gets tough, yes, we can trust him. God is able enough to keep us standing. Whatever may come our way. Our God's unfailing. From the first to the last, he's never changing. Future, present, and past. Our God's amazing. And we can put our trust in him. That's lots of good stuff to make lots of noise about. So let me pray for us, and then we're going to sing and make lots of noise with the band as we sing My Lighthouse. There are some actions with our next song as well. I'm going to pray, and then Alan uh, will come and lead us in our actions, and the band will lead us in our next song. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are able to keep us standing, whatever may come our way. Lord, we pray today that we would know you as our help and our shield. Lord, may your unfailing love rest upon us as we put our hope in ye. Amen. Amen.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we praise you for being a God who loves us and speaks to us through the Bible. Please help us to be excited to listen to your word. Help us to understand it and be shaped by what it says. As various groups at church start up after the summer holidays, please help us to keep your word central as the most important thing. Thank you for the opportunity to read your word together week by week in home groups and at Women's Fellowship, and for the children to also do this in their children's church groups. Thank you for the leaders of these groups, for the time they give, us, uh, they give up to prepare, for their longing to help, other, to help others be shaped by your word, and for their willingness to serve others. Please fill our groups with excitement for your gospel and make them places where we grow to know you better, to love you more, and to support one another, to keep living wholeheartedly for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father, thank you for the opportunity that comes from the Great North Run, running right past HCG. Please help us to make the most of chance to be a visible presence in our community, to serve others and have conversations. Please give us confidence in the gospel and a boldness to be willing to chat to those we don't know and to be welcoming. Please too, would the offer of refreshments and conversation be well received and would people be, become more interested in engaging with future events we put on as a church. We ask this for Jesus' glory. Amen. Now please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer, which will be on the screen behind me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Um, now please stand so we sing again.
think after that, it's only fitting that I say those words from Psalm 33 again for us as we finish. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on a ten-string lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Amen. Amen. Do join us for tea and coffee at the back. And also remember that there is an opportunity to do, join with the Great North Run and to encourage those there and to speak with them outside as well. Thank you.